Welcome to our course on the greatest unsolved mysteries of the universe. I'm Brian Schmidt. And I'm Paul Francis. We're both astronomers here at the Australian National University's Mount Stromlo Observatory. And Paul here is an expert on quasars. We're going to learn more about quasars. They're some of the brightest, most exciting objects in the sky. But Paul also works on things closer to home, comets trying to understand how the comets that we see and how they tell us about those that we don't see. And finally, Paul also studies galaxies, huge galaxies, primordial galaxies in the early universe that we still don't really understand very well. So Paul really is an expert in mysteries. Brian started off his research as a PhD on studying supernovae, which is how stars explode. And then when he came to ANU, he started using these supernovae to measure the expansion of the universe and how it's changing, and came up with a totally unexpected result that the universe was expanding faster and faster and faster, which led to the discovery of dark energy and a Nobel Prize, and Brian losing all his spare time. Since then, he's been working on gamma ray bursts, these mysterious flashes of gamma rays that flood through the solar system on a regular basis and tracking them down like crazy, um, continuing his work on supernovae, and he's now also involved in commissioning a new telescope that's going to carry out the first digital survey of the entire southern sky and discover all sorts of interesting stuff. So Paul, in this course, we're doing things a little differently. Normally when you do a course, you study all that you know about the universe or about the subject. And in this course, we're taking a slightly different tack. We're looking at the things we don't know. And there are two reasons for that. One is because you hear most press releases about astronomy, it's always the astronomer discovered this, NASA discovers that, and that's because you know, we like to look smart and brag, and we're really saying, please give us more money. But the second, uh, that gives a false impression that we actually know most of the things about the universe, which is very far from the truth. We're actually extremely ignorant. Oh, we're not doing badly, considering we're barely evolved monkeys and some average star on the outskirts of a boring galaxy, uh, but we really don't know very much. The other reason is we want this course to tell you about what it's like to be an actual researcher in the field. And researchers don't research things that are known. By and definition, research are things that we don't know. Yeah, in the words of Einstein, if we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be called research. So that's what we're going to focus on. Um, nine of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the universe, things we don't know the answers about, um, things that are all active topics of research, and in fact, things that we ourselves are researching. And this course is at a level that's a little beyond the average documentary. It really is going to require some, some knowledge of maths and physics at science at the high school level. Yes, so we expect you to be reasonably comfortable with doing algebra and basic physics, things like heat, energy, Newton's laws of motion, things like that. If you're not sure about whether you're going to be able to handle the course, have a look at the homework in the first session. Um, if that's looking feasible, then it doesn't get any harder than that, so you should be on, on track for the entire course. Let me show you how the course works. Now, when you log in, the course will look something like this. This is showing the entire course. You won't see all of that at this point. You will only see what you've done so far and the next week's worth of sections. Now, the course is divided into four parts. We're going to start with part one, Greatest Unsolved Mysteries of the Universe, and each part is made up with a certain number of sections, usually nine, though part three has ten sections. You're normally expected to do one part of the course every three weeks, which means you need to do about three sections a week. And we will reveal the next three sections every week, uh, 10 p.m. on Monday night, just as soon as you finish the deadline for the previous three sections, just to help keep you on track working through the whole thing. Now, each section, first of all, has a lesson. Now, a lesson is basically a replacement for lectures in this course. So each lesson consists of videos followed by short questions, then another video. Each video is typically between 5 and 15 minutes long, not too long. And then there's a short question afterwards to test that you've actually understood and watched the videos. These questions are worth 5% of the overall course mark, and you get as many chances as you like to answer them, so you should be able to get all those marks. It's just a help make sure you've understood the key points in each video. Now each lesson, which is the lecture equivalent, should take about an hour, maybe an hour and a quarter to do. And every section has one of these. So typically 
that means it's about you need to do three sections a week that means you're going to have three to four hours worth of watching videos and answering these short questions each week which is a replacement for the normal lectures you would otherwise go to in a face-to-face -face course the other thing you absolutely need to do in each of these sections is the homework assignment now this will consist of a variable number of questions, some multiple choice, some formula entry, some numerical entry. And this is once again designed to test you on what you've learnt by watching the videos in that section. Now, however, you only have two chances to get each question right, not an infinite number, so you will have to work a bit harder at this. Also, in each section, there are reference notes, which is just a quick summary of the key points from the videos. You should watch the videos first time through, but if you just want to go back and find a particular key equation, then the reference notes are useful second time. There are also worked examples and practice questions, which you can go through, if you wish, to help prepare yourself for the homework assignment. These are entirely optional. They're not worth marks. It's just a chance to practice with no penalty to learn out what you're going to do for the homework assignments. And finally, there's a mystery in each part of the course, which means there are four mysteries over the entire course. Now, each mystery is a universe different from our own. The purpose of the mysteries is to give you a feeling for what it's like to be an actual astronomer solving real problems. If I just tell you a real problem to solve, you can just look up the answer in a book. So what I've done is I've made up four different universes, in some ways similar to ours, in some ways rather different, so that you have to apply all the methods you're learning about in this course to try and figure out what's going on. So in each section, there will be some clues. So here we live in the planet Zog in the first one. And there's a picture with its two stars, and its night sky, which has bubbles rather than stars. And so in each section, so three sections a week, you will get a few more clues. I would like you to discuss them, discuss them on the discussion board here, or in Microsoft Teams. And then, at the end of each section, there is a timed test. Now this test is timed from when you first start it, you have three hours to answer the questions. Now, three hours should be plenty. It shouldn't really take much more than one, one and a half hours, but I'm giving you a bit of extra time. But don't look at it before you're ready to do it. This test takes you step by step through solving the mystery of that particular mystery universe you've done over that part of the course. So before you start the test, you should really make sure that you've thought long and hard and carefully and done calculations based on the mystery to try and figure out what's going on, because that's the preparation for you. We will run optional drop-in sessions to help you prepare for that as well the day before. Anyway, once you've done the first part, which will take three weeks, then on to the second part. Once again, each three sections will be revealed every week. Uh, every section, the lesson questions and the homework are due uh, 10 p.m. following Monday and the time test will be due at the end of that three-week block and on through all four sections of the course. So I think that's most of what you need to know to do this course. If you have any more questions that you'll see there are reference notes here in the introductory section and also just post something on the discussion forum and we'll answer your questions if there's anything that's unclear. All right so Let's go on to our first section where we look at the expansion of space.